Hello guys! Here's another nursing subject that may be of interest to you. The sedation and analgesia in the ICU. Alright, contrary to the common belief, our primary role in inpatient care is to alleviate pain and suffering rather than to save lives because saving life is impossible to do uh, regularly. Uh, do you agree? The patient in the ICU are the ones who are in the most pain and uh, discomfort. Therefore, this session discusses the usage of intravenous analgesics and sedatives in the ICU to improve patient comfort. And to begin, let's define pain. Pain is the brain's way of communicating that it perceives a threat. Uh, we all know what pain is and we don't want to go through it, right? Unless you enjoyed it. All right. Pain is normal response to protect you from a potential danger or threat. It can be an acute pain or persistent pain. Acute pain is a type of pain that lasts for a brief uh, period and is usually associated with physical damage or potential damage. It will last uh, somewhere between a few seconds uh, and uh, three months. Uh, if you cut your hand, uh, for example, or if you cut your thumb, for example, you will experience pain in the wounded hand, which will prevent you from using it normally. And when your hand heals, the pain will go away. The word persistent pain describes pain that lasts for three months after the anticipated healing period and it does not mean ongoing injury unlike acute pain the pain is more related to the nervous system changes than to a permanent injury so the cause of continuing pain after an injury is actually complex people previously used the word uh, chronic pain uh, to refer to the seriousness of the discomfort or pain but it really refers to how long you have been in pain because of ambiguity, uh, I will use the word persistent pain, okay? People frequently assume that the more pain we feel, the more damage there must be. This, however, is not the case because pain does not always imply damage or further damage. Even if they have the same injury, each person reports pain differently. The intensity of one person's pain will also vary over the course of an hour or day. There are people who have serious injuries but experience mild pain, and others who have minor injuries but experience severe pain. Pain tolerance also varies from person to person. When we are in pain, what happens? All right. The nervous system is the main component of our bodies that causes us to feel discomfort. The brain, spinal cord, and uh, peripheral nerves makes up the nervous system. There are millions of pain receptors or detectors reside in the walls of the end of peripheral nerves all over the body. The receptor's job is to keep track of what's going on in the body. They are able to sense changes in mechanical forces, such as pins or friction, temperature, either hot or cold, and chemicals, which are either created naturally by the body, such as inflammation, inflammation or by external causes, such as stings from nettles. During an acute pain, for example, your hand being pressed against a door. So this is painful. Uh, it's really painful. The stimulus from the door will stimulate the mechanical receptors in your hand. When a mechanical receptor is stimulated, an electrical signal is sent up to the nerve, then to the spinal cord. As an electrical pulse enters the spinal cord, Chemicals are released into a space known as a synapse. The synapse is a gap between the peripheral nerve and the spinal cord nerve that travels to the brain. These chemicals are referred to as neurotransmitter. 
So neurotransmitter binds to the nerve receptors in the spinal cord. Then an electrical pulse is sent up the spinal cord to the brain. As a result of this, the brain is informed that mechanical receptors have been stimulated at this stage. However, it's just a threat message at this time, not yet a painful message. Before you can feel pain, the brain must process and weigh, weigh up a lot of information to decide whether you are at risk. So if you have a previous experience of this incident, then your recollection of, of it will be activated. So what does this signal mean the last time your brain got it? So the brain will process this. So based on previous experience, the brain is more likely to conclude that there is possible damage. Okay, so the brain will process your memory or recollection of the event. Your brain also processes the immediate situation from your senses like your eyes and ears. If anything of a greater threat or risk occurs at that time, you would uh, definitely experience less or no discomfort. Like for example, if you held your hand against the door while you are running out of your house due to an earthquake, you would uh, most likely feel no pain. This is because the brain assumes that being trampled by a falling roof possesses a greater risk to life than any hand injury. Therefore, the brain is protecting you at the time. Okay, then feeling and thoughts. You may have feel more discomfort at periods of greater tension or greater risk or anxiety. If you are especially worried about work or family life at the moment, your brain is more likely to believe that you are, in, uh, you are at risk. And then job and lifestyle. The brain also processes uh, the information related to your job and lifestyle. For example, you are a driver, so you drive for a living. Any injury to your hand will render you unable to function. Consequently, in order to guarantee that you can take care of your hand, the brain will protect you by providing pain signals to prevent you from using it and allowing it to recover. And then the other information the brain processes are your future plans, personal and cultural beliefs, like, like this stuff. So a lot of information the brain has to process before the brain produces pain. All right. The brain's challenge is to create a reasonable rationalization based on all of the knowledge it, it is getting. If the brain determines that uh, there is a risk, it will cause pain. Therefore, pain is referred to as a brain output. You can experience this discomfort or pain because the brain has to determine that there is a danger to your hand based on all of the available facts not just the pressure signals from the hand. All right. When the brain determines that you are in danger or you are at risk and produces pain, it also alerts other systems of the body to protect you, uh, such as the sympathetic nervous system, which will cause the pulse rate to rise and cause you to sweat, the muscle system that protects and settles down the hand, then the endocrine system to decrease uh, gut activity so that the energy can be transferred to aid in the healing process. And your immune system, which produces uh, chemicals that aid in recovery. All right. In acute pain, these systems are only activated for a short time. And in persistent pain, they are activated for longer periods of time. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you. Uh, I hope you will watch the next video.